Hello, this is Pam Gleason. I'm interviewing Bill Owens. Hello, Bill. Do you give permission for this to be used for the Hayward Historical Society, CSU East Bay, and the Berkeley Bancroft Library? No problem. <laughs> okay, great. Let's start out with when you were born, where you were born, and a little bit about your childhood. Uh, I was born in San Jose, California. Uh, my parents met in Livermore. Uh, we lived for a while in El Cerrito. My dad worked at the shipyards. And my mother also worked at the shipyards. My dad worked there before he went in the Army. Uh, afterwards, we moved to Roseville after the war, uh, where I went to Sylvan Elementary School in Citrus Heights and San Juan High School in Citrus Heights. And after high school, uh, uh, I applied to three different colleges, and they wouldn't take me because my Academic scores were too low. I was a farm boy, never read, a, never read a book. But Chico State had a program for agricultural students, provisionary students. So uh, they took three, no, they took 13 of us the first year. This is 1957. Uh, the second year, uh, there was 13 of us. And the third year, there was three of us. And then finally they made me take English 1A and I flunked out. <laughs> and my roommate at the time said, let's go to Europe. And I said, yeah, let's go. I'll go to, I'll go to Paris and we'll study at the Alliance Francaise. If I'm living in Paris, surely I can learn to speak French. <laughs> I think I lasted two days at the Alliance Francaise. <laughs> and so he started hitchhiking around Europe. It was the fall. Uh, it was cold. And started hitchhiking south. Uh, down into Germany, uh, all the way through the length of what was then Yugoslavia, to Greece, Turkey, Syria, Lebanon, Egypt, all the way up the Nile River. And nine months later, I sailed underneath the Golden Gate Bridge and went back to college at Chico State. And th three years later, uh, I was able to graduate with a 1.8 grade point, I think. Great. So, and during that time traveling, is that when you got interested in, in photography? No. Nope. In ah. college, I took a photography class and got a C. Ah, interesting. So, um, you didn't like it at that point? No, I loved it. I oh. mean, I like a lot of things, but I mean, I didn't have any talent. And uh, after, after college, uh, I married Janet, and we applied for the Peace Corps. And that fall, Kennedy was assassinated, and we were so happy when the Peace Corps took us. And we were school teachers in Jamaica and the West Indies. Oh, together. We, uh, yeah. You were married at that point? Yeah. Oh, and uh, at that time, a photographer came to our village and photographed us <coughs> working in the Peace Corps. And as soon as I saw what he was doing, I said, oh, I want to do that. So I went out and bought a camera, and I bought a, a book and started reading uh, The History of Photography by Belmont Newhall and The Family of Man. Those were the two books that were my Bible and started teaching myself photography, bought a camera for ten dollars, a Leica that had a hole, it was a cloth curtain, it had a hole in the curtain and I just took shoe polish and filled in the little hole so there's no longer a, a spot on the negative and started photographing this little village where we were teachers called White Morrow. The school is still there and the village is still there but uh, I went back recently a couple of years ago and uh, instead of being lots of poor people now, there's lots and lots and lots of poor people huh? with no work, nothing to do, a uh, pretty bleak f future. I asked the, the woman if I could, what I could do to help out. Could I help a student out with a scholarship? She said, which would really help, it would be a computer that everybody could use. Huh? I have yet to send that school a computer, but I will. That's great. Huh. Wow. So um, were there still Peace Corps workers there when you went to visit? I don't know. Oh, okay. I was there to visit some distilleries. Oh wow. Okay. That's yeah. That's your that's your big business now, right? Right. That's yeah. I'm president of the American Distilling Institute. Founder. Yeah, I saw that. I've been doing it 15 years. I have eight employees. So where does Hayward come into the picture? Uh, I had a job. Uh, came out of Pisco, went to Chico, uh, San Francisco State. Uh, and because I wanted to be a photographer to study journalism, work at the Daily Gator newspaper, <clears throat> and I put in a year. I knew better than take the GRE. I could never pass that. And after a year, I, st I started looking for a job, 
and Pat Plydens. Uh, Santa uh, Santa Rosa. Uh, I didn't get a job there, but there was a the Hearst family at the corner of Third and Mission is a building. It's owned by the Hearst, and on the fourth floor there was this book, and you just take the elevator up and you just sign in this book if you're looking for a job. There's nobody in the room even, and I put my name when they're looking for a job, and a week later the uh, a guy from the Livermore Independent called. And I got a job uh, working at the, the Livermore Independent in the fall of uh, 68. And then that fall, the summer, that fall, the Rolling Stones concert happened. So I was there to photograph that. Uh, but my, my real interest is that uh, Janet and I had came out of the Peace Corps. We're both interested in sociology. And when you're a young person, you move out to suburbia, you're going to be in terrible, terrible culture shock. Uh, everybody your age has two cars, nice houses, swimming pools, and etc. And we didn't. And it's going to take us a while to catch up because we've been out of the country for uh, three years. And, uh, you know, you have a kid and you're struggling uh, to, to, like everybody else to make ends meet. And it took me, I did a project for the city. I think the photographs are on display at the Livermore Library, the first little project I did. I had no idea to do even do a book. I just wanted to do a documentary project. Um, then I did. Uh, I got a little grant from the city. I think like five hundred dollars. Uh, part that's the photographs that are on exhibit uh, from the city, and turned over the photographs to the library. And then I, uh, you know, I have access to everybody because I'm working for a newspaper. You were a reporter. A rep uh, well, photographer. photographer. I, was, I was a reporter. Oh, uh, I see. I don't have those kind of writing skills. My writing skills are much better now. I, I'm a pretty good poet. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I can write pretty good if I, That's awesome. if I have the time. That's awesome. Uh, so um, it took a year or so to get my thoughts together, to write a mission statement, uh, to go raise some money and start to work on suburbia. Yeah, I think I started in 1970 and... Uh, it was published in '72. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, one of the articles I read said that your was a, I think it was you. It was an article with you and uh, one of your colleagues joking about how it started out as um, you fo photographing garages or garage sales. Uh, not not really. I photograph garage sales all the time. Uh, you know, but uh, the newspaper was assigned me to photograph everything. I see. You know, from high school basketball games to uh, the Rotary Club, the Quans Club, so I'm you know, actively doing that anyhow. I see. But I didn't, if I'm going to do a documentary photography job, I didn't want to do it on a 35 millimeter camera. I didn't want to commingle my job uh, with a personal project. So I, I was able to take a, uh, get a small grant and then just work f four days at the newspaper and every Saturday for a year I went and photographed suburbia. Oh, great. And did that on a two and a quarter camera, so I have my own negatives, large negatives, and uh, had a little bit of money to hire a printer. So I'd shoot and develop and make contact sheets, and then I had a printer in San Francisco who printed for me. He printed on all, all my books. Wow. So you had already had this idea, having come from Jamaica and ha having already had your college education, that this was something special going on in this area. Hayward and I, I don't want to say special. I want to say ordinary. ordinary. Ma matter of fact, it's interesting. I'm going through my files, and I found when I was in college, I took a sociology class, and I did a drawing of Citrus Heights, California, of the two streets, Larkspur Lane and Nelson Lane, and put little houses on it and a little description of all the neighbors. So I've always been interested in that sociology, who uh -huh, we are, uh -huh. how many acres of land does each person have. So I've always been interested in that. But how do you <clears throat> take those skills and... Uh, or interest or curiosity and uh, put it together. I see. You know, I'm not a trained, I don't have a PhD 